And now it's time for questions for the projection department, because one of the main features uh, on the castle is the projection onto it. Uh, so I've got some questions here for Karen and Ross is just off camera here, uh, and they're the two main projectionists. They deal with uh, creating most of the graphics. Do you guys create most of the graphics? Yes. You've got other people that help you with them mm. as well? We do. Um, so, first question is, how many projectors? Uh, we have 12. 12 projectors, and how are they? They're tiled, aren't they, on the castle? They're kind of... They are, yes. They're, they they, they uh, fall into six, six zones. Okay. And I'm guessing that because the castle is basically like that, that it's tiled as the multiple of, say, three wide by two high, I'm guessing? That's correct. Okay. Yes. And you've got 12 projectors, so are you doubling up then for intensity? We are, yes. And it, oh, right, also, okay. it also creates a fail-safe, so if anything happens to one projector, then the show Then you don't can, lose, you're not going to lose continue. a big, big chunk. Yes. Have you had any problems with those projectors that have been pretty reliable? Never, never had a problem okay. with them yet. Okay, that's good. Mm. Uh, what software do you use? Uh, we use a software called Watch Out. And, Watch Out? Yeah, and uh, it's able to basically stitch the image together and allow okay. us to do various corrections on the lineup so it will fit the castle exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I see you're doing the lining up at the end of every night. Yes. Uh, you tend to tweak and adjust things. Now, in the past, that used, used to have the P PG projectors. That's that's right. Yeah. It doesn't seem yes. that long ago. It seems uh, how long it wasn't, ago was no, it? No, three, three years ago. We we we, sw we switched to video three years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, before that, we were running uh, the PG projectors. Are lovely projectors, uh -huh. but they're quite. Uh, I've, I don't want to say old-fashioned. They have a particular style and a way of working because they're yeah. film projectors. They were basically, it was huge format film That's right. on reels, but they could actually overlay, they could have multiple layers sliding past each other and That's sort of, right. uh, what, what's the word for it? Interference patterns or? Uh, yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. To create mask more. Mask contra mask, as we call yeah. it. So you, yeah. could, you can have one image sliding behind the mask of another one and then project another one into that space. So with okay. two projectors, you could do quite sophisticated Oh, uh, right. Effects. So, right, okay. I didn't realise that it was two projectors actually syncing up onto the one area mm. to create mm. those sort of transitions. Okay. Yeah, but you're not getting double brightness in that case. That's no. The but they had quite big lamps in them, didn't they? Uh, yes. yes, seven kilowatt Zenon arc light. Oh, ever had a Xenon lamp explode? Yes. Uh, I haven't, but... Uh, I have. Okay. <laughs> Where are you holding it at the time? I wasn't holding it. It was inside a machine that was, oh. run, it was running live in the middle of a show. Oh, did it damage the machine? Yes. Oh, it, we, wiped, we... it wiped out the insides. Fortunately, the shutter was closed, so it didn't go anywhere else. But it okay. was all the, the lamp houses were built to contain something like that. Okay. So yeah, so basically, it, it happened inside the lamp house, but you do hear it when it goes. Yeah, one of the videos that I've already put up uh, is showing uh, one of our lights. Uh, it did the same. Just you know, our uh, thirty-five hundreds that right. the, washed the castle. Uh, one of them. It had a lamp failure and it blew, it shattered the lens and took out the, the ultraviolet filter and everything. Yeah, we, we used to have to wear what we call the beekeeper's uniform, which was mm. a the armored blazer. mask and a yeah. big leather and jacket and, aprons yeah. and with gloves which covered your yeah. arteries yeah. and your wrists. Mm. So, yeah. That's yeah. Uh, what we got for the old xenon follow spots as well. <laughs> yeah. But the PG projectors, I can remember the first time you guys came in the job, it was the old stands. And because there was nowhere else for them, uh, you guys were up on the roof under those tarpaulins basically. <laughs> It was a, it was a, quite windswept. It would, they didn't it suffer. Was, it was. It was a bad year as well because I remember they, the, we had a windstorm come through and there was the big RBS banner on the back of the stand uh -huh. and it completely ripped that free, oh. blew it up and it came right yeah. over the top and folded over. We're talking okay. a banner about the, the size of a cricket pitch. Yeah. It was absolutely I enormous. Guess it probably protected your projectors from any further water damage. And did that? There wasn't going to be much light coming out of them right off. No. No, yeah. we, we did have to go up and check. I do remember going up the wee ladder and then crawling underneath tarpaulins and things like that. It wasn't yeah. exactly the most glamorous, uh, then again, showbiz isn't glamorous, is it? <laughs> no. no. It's cold, damp, so, dark. Um, dark. <laughs> mm. So what sort of resolution are those projectors? And what sort of power of the lamp is in them, these new ones you have? Uh, so they're uh, 17 kilo, uh, 17,000 lumens each. Okay. Um, and they're quite, actually quite low resolution. They're... Uh, okay. They don't uh, WHDA. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 it, it was a kind of a co uh, price versus quality conversation yeah. because when you're projecting at the scale that we are there and you've got as yeah. many projectors as you have, 
and the audience is as far away uh -huh. as it is, you, you don't, don't need, need that noise. resolution. No. It still looks it still looks fairly good when you're up close, though. And to, yeah. to be honest, because it's six because it's six zones, uh -huh. the resolution is uh, that's just part. Yeah, it's part doubled. of the image. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. So actually, when you put the image up, it's uh, it's yeah. actually over the resolution of the total rather than you know just one projector, if that makes sense. Yeah, I also noticed in the past uh, the Pidgey projectors, you had to physically move them to align them, didn't you? Yes, yeah, there's no adjustment on lenses, there's no lens shift, nothing like that. You have to be really good with your, your no. physics and your optics to but get that right. The new projectors, you control that from the computer? Uh, both. Do a, oh, right, do a certain amount of both, actually, because you because the software is only good working to a cert, to a certain level. Any software, any yeah. any projection correction software, can only really go so far uh -huh. and be quite successful at it. Yeah. So you can so you can push it so far. So it's always a good idea to do as much as you can with the projector itself. I yeah. think. And so you get the physical position right, and then then you look at the lens shift and get that right, and then the the software ideally should be the, the, the finessing the tweaks to get it yeah. absolutely, you know, pixel accurate. Yeah. Mm. Like anything, line it up right first yeah. and then. Yeah. yeah. So, going back to the picture projectors, you guys were making the large format film scrolls then. Yeah. yeah. And then, did you feel you were forced to update towards the video when video came in, or did you just feel it was the next logical progression? No, no, no. It was the right time because, mm. uh, I mean, those PG projectors, uh, they were actually designed to do things like Jean-Michel Jarre, you know, uh. his me mega concerts that he used to do in places like, uh, uh, let me think, Beijing and... Uh, okay. What was the American one? Dallas. Was oh, Dallas? Right. yes. Um, so the French built them for them. That was before my time, it has to be uh. said. Uh, so, I mean, you're talking like 20... 20 odd year old technology. So they were actually mm -hmm. built for those Sony Lumiere spectaculars? Yes. yes. Right. Oh, right. Okay. The, right. the early ones were. And then yeah. I, I worked with the prototype scrollers in the 90s when uh -huh. they were first brought over into the UK. Yeah. Um, and I did use those in well, on West End musicals. Oh, right. Okay. So, so I was programming in French. Oh, right. Because I, they were very much prototypes from France. So some of those projects yeah. were over 25 years old. It's also yeah. worth mentioning because the military tattoo is really strong on music, it's yeah. mostly music. Uh, Karen actually works to sheet music when she's do. actually doing the uh, setting of the uh, transitions and cues on the actual video. That's right, It's yep. quite complex. Uh, and there's also a bit of time code going on. Now, who's generating the time code? Uh, sound generate the time code, but I, um, but I give the sync cue. So I oh, basically okay. give a trigger cue to, the, to ah. the time code and the sound. So I'm kind of acting as a show caller at that yeah. moment. Okay. But that also means that I can sync the video to to sound without us having to receive time code. And it's a really nice way of working for this particular show because yeah. it means nobody's actually tied to anybody. So we just do a sync so we just operate a sync start. So this is the first year I think we've used such a major piece of time code in the show. Because uh, Mr. Blue Sky, if you go on uh, YouTube and you type in the Royal Ember Millage to two thousand eighteen you'll find a, a track in it, Mr. Blue Sky, it's by ELO. And uh, it is a Sony Lumiere, it really is. Yeah. We just threw everything it at it. It's got, uh, and that show is mostly running on time code, including the lasers, the lighting, the sound is a click track to the conductors at yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, so although it's a live orchestra, they are running mm -hmm. to time code, which is quite a feat yeah. Yeah. for an orchestra, a big, especially that size. Uh, so we get the projection running, the audio is running, well the audio is kind of running, it's, the audio is live, yeah. but uh, the pyro in the front of the castle, the lasers and lighting, but the fireworks up the top of the castle are still being manually triggered yeah. to the music because... Uh, projection is as well, for Mr. Blue Sky, I, oh, think, okay. I think we're the only ones that are, Can but I, I trigger the start. Uh -huh. of, of Mr. So Blue Sky. Really yeah. yeah. So that is yeah. basically it's everything uh, syncing up to you. Something else that yeah. I hadn't realised there's another layer of kind of uh, complication in this. Uh, uh -huh. Have you realised that there's three conductors down there? I, I yeah. didn't realise yeah. there are three conductors. Yeah. So there's, there's the main band conductor, there's uh -huh. the stage band has a conductor, oh, course, and the choir yeah. has a conductor. And then the choir has, has the And they, those two conductors are slaving so, to the guy in the middle because he's got the click. Oh, he's got the click, so he sets the... That's quite yeah. complex. 
Yeah, that, amazing. I did that. Must have taken a bit of practice it, it, to get that to is, go. It is. I mean, I mean, all credit to the guys down on the Esplanade because that is not easy to do. Absolutely. That but then they are military, so they are professional musicians, and they're pretty precise but the that way. The choir's a school. The choir's the school. So they are. Their conductor isn't. Yeah, they've got um, conductors so they, well. Yeah, about that. but they're looking right across the length of the Esplanade. Uh -huh. To, to be able to follow what's going on. So and of course there's a time shift of sound across the Esplanade there is, there is as that well. they have to work with. Uh, the choir, although they're kids, they've, they've done really well. They have. Yep, it's a good so. It's a good bit of the show. There were a few blips at the beginning oh. when they had a yeah. slight issue with the sound desk, but uh, they resolved that. It was the, yeah. the vocoder that does the Mr. Blue Sky, and it does the vocoder effect. Mm -hmm. They had a slide that turned out there was something else that was generating a different clock frequency. And it skewed that a bit, but that's resolved now. And uh, well, this is the last show tonight, it's and nice. the last, the, the bulk of the shows that of rendition, renditions of that they've been good. It's been a really, it's been one of the, the pinnacle bits of I'd say the two in general mm. actually, mm -hmm. because it's one of the most complex bits we've put together for that. Mm. Are the, um, just to say, anybody who's watching, who can get the BBC, the show is on the BBC tomorrow. The BBC, now keep in mind this video is probably going to go out after that, unfortunately. Ah, okay. Yeah, it's a, a live stream would have been nice, but it's not really overly practical in case we see anything really naughty. <laughs> uh, so how are we doing time wise? I'm just thinking, you know, so it would have been, so it's, for, for us it's due to be on Monday the 27th, isn't it? Okay. So you to edit it. But then again, someone's going to copy it and put it up on YouTube anyway, aren't they? Because they did all the other years. <laughs> mm. I, yeah. It's been happening. Yeah. So, at what point do you start uh, planning for next year? Um, well, uh, we started kind of, haven't we? we had a, we've had a quick conversation yeah. about it, but yeah, uh, it's about March yeah. usually, isn't it? March, heavier, March heavier seriously. Mark, from March is when it gets serious. In a way, some of the stuff you did for the Mexican act this year is kind of in the direction of what they're asking for next year. I'm being careful not to say what the theme is for next year because it's not been officially released yet. Mm. But some of what you projected on the castle during the Mexican thing, yeah, the mosaic stuff is along the lines of that. Yeah, and it looks absolutely. great. It's yes. like kind of psychedelic. It's a bit magic mushroom if you ask me, but look great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We wanted to do something that matched the energy, I think, of the yeah. Mexicans. And that was that's a particularly good, that's the other high point of this uh, this year. I think uh, mm. I'm allowed to show favoritism for acts. I, I, I like the Mexicans. I've my, said so on Twitter. My so. call yeah. this year's is the Mexicans and Mr. Blue Sky are my two favourite bits. Yeah. So that's that's very good. But yeah, that's a projection. And that's what goes on behind the scenes. It's actually quite a lot goes on behind the scenes of the projection, but it looks fantastic. As you'll see if you go on YouTube, well, you're already on YouTube. And you go and look for uh, footage of Embra military to two, particularly from the east stand, and you'll see a lot of the work that goes into the projection, particularly in the video animation. It's very good. So, thanks for uh, Thank thanks you. for helping this part of the video. No worries. <laughs>